Peter Sissons. Yeah, they're all bugged. Now, four ministers of state from John Major's government who all held their seats with varying degrees of ease or difficulty. John Redwood's votes, well, they weigh them in your part of the world, don't they? Um, John Redwood, Angela Rumbold, Michael Portillo and Virginia Bottomley. Um, uh, Virginia Bottomley, what effect on this campaign did the war of Jennifer's ear have? Did it cost Labour? I think it did. I mean, time and again, Labour tried to run health scare stories. They had endless press conferences on health. But actually, the facts spoke louder than their fantasies and their scare stories. William Walgrave is widely perceived to have snatched defeat from the jaws of victory there. Do you think he did himself some harm? He wasn't seen in the campaign thereafter. On the contrary, what William's done over the months is to build up good working relations with the doctors, with the nurses. And actually, the campaign coincided with these remarkable results about falling weight lists about increased activity. The tragedy of that great event about Jennifer's ear was it coincided with guys, for example, well, everybody used to speak about yeah. actually saying what had happened over the past year. But let's, uh, let's talk about the future now. Mm. Do you expect to join the Cabinet? I want to stay what I'm doing what I'm doing. We're in the middle of a change in the health service. We you want honestly, to carry on with you're it. You're honestly saying you would turn down a cabinet job <laughs> if it were offered well, what I'm just to do what you're doing. Well, I know that people like you think that people like us are constantly <coughs> longing to change. But actually, most of us get tremendously committed to the, what we're doing anyway. And the thing that most exasperated me during the campaign was all those health service people terrified that Labour would get in with an act of vandalism, put aside trusts, put aside fund holders. I actually believe in the health service. I'm convinced that what we're doing is improving the health service, and I want to continue doing that so that we can carry on having one of the best health services in the world. Now, Michael Portillo, you don't have to do a party I election know, broadcast indeed, but, now, Virginia Bottom. But it's the cynical people like you who think that we don't actually no feel ever, very strongly no, 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 about no, no, what we're doing no and feel very committed cynical. to it. <laughs> Michael <laughs> Portillo. <laughs> The man tipped by the Press Association's political editor as the eventual successor to John Major. Well, that, that's, should, uh, that should keep you out of the cabinet. It's a particularly uh, silly tip to make the day that John Major has just <laughs> been returned with such an authoritative majority. I mean, John Major has stamped his authority on this election victory. He kept his nerve during all the period when the polls were going against him. He showed, I thought, the same absolute determination and coolness that he showed during the Gulf War. And he emerges from this with his authority immensely enhanced. And today we shall now see him uh, able to form a government of the sort, entirely as he wishes, with absolute authority. What are your priorities? You're the man who used to think the poll tax was a good thing. Well, I don't know uh, what I may be doing after this election, but I will talk about the poll tax very happily and say that I think that the role that the poll tax played during the general election was possibly favourable to us in that the election was largely about whether you wanted high, taxa high taxation under Labour or low taxation under the Conservatives. And in the very moment of the campaign, Labour councils were sending out high tax bills, high community charge bills, which proved to people the connection between the Labour Party and high taxation. It was only a short jump in their minds then to make the connection between electing Labour to Westminster and having high taxes at Westminster too. Now, Angela Rumbold, you're the nearest the um, government had to or has to a minister for women. Is it time for a ministry for women? Certainly not. I don't think uh, anyone has ever wanted a ministry for women. And I think if you look at the results today, you will see that the women voted for the government for their policies that were most sensible and effective then well, best. What are you going to do for women? Because everywhere you look, this is the issue that working mothers, single parents, want to raise. My single parents and my working mothers were all coming out and supporting us. They were saying that they thought the Conservative policies were the best ones, that they did best under the Conservative But your majority government. was slashed. My, my majority was the result of the Labour Party trying to target seats in London, particularly mine. The tactics they used were really rather crude tactics and clearly the electorate didn't want them. But is it time for a woman in the Cabinet? I have no idea what John Major is going to do. It's entirely up to him. He's now got to look at the people who are elected and he will choose the best people to run the ministries that he wants and I wish him every success in that. But 
I mean, there isn't a woman in the cabinet. It must be time for women in the cabinet. Yeah, John Major, Around this table, John Major we, have, we have, if I may say so, the two, since Linda Chalker lost her seat, the two prime candidates. Now, come on, be candid with us. You would love to join Mon John Major's cabinet if asked. Of course we'd love to John, join John well, Major's. No, she wouldn't. She wants to stay where no, she is. No, no, no. <laughs> we, we would love to join John Major's cabinet if he asks us and if he thinks that we're the best people to do the job. I don't want to get there simply because I'm a woman. I'm fed up to the back teeth with being told that I've got to get there because I'm a woman. I want to get there on merit. I hope that some of us will get in there because we are the best people to do the job. John Redwood, you were head of Mrs Thatcher's policy unit for a couple of years, closely identified with her. Is she, now that John Major has his own mandate, going to become, very gradually, a non-person? No, she won't become a non-person. She'll be a respected elder stateswoman. But the agenda has moved on and the people have moved on. We're all looking forward through the 90s to the next millennium with John Major with an exciting agenda of change and reform where we need improvements and continuity and stability where we don't. Above all, we want to believe in a Britain that is something in the world that counts for something, is a respected ally, which is an important member of the European community. That is what John Major's, Major's leadership offers us. That is what Neil Kinnock could not do for this country, as the electorate have just decided. You see, when you have a majority of 17, it's arguable that conviction politics could get you into trouble, whereas consensus politics, a return to consensus politics, could actually prolong the life of the government. Is that the sort of theory that you would subscribe to? You need principles in politics so that people know where you come from, but you need sensitivity to the nuances of public opinion. And that is what I think John Major combines extremely well uh, uh, in the way he leads our party and in the way he's led us through this election. One we have listened to what the electors are telling us. Yeah. There are things we have to improve, which we would improve over the next five years, but there are core principles, uh, conservative beliefs in freedom and enterprise, which will go on. All right, what's the biggest single priority for the next government? Well, the first priority is to lift the economy out of the recession that has dogged us and the other leading countries over recent months. And that is only possible with John Major and the Conservative team. We've seen the results today. The stock market up 160 points at the opening. Money market rates beginning to ease. The pound much stronger against the Deutsche Mark. It would have been the other way around if there had been Liberal and Labour politicians with their hands on the lever of power. Now, we're all to always told that John Major is, is a listening politician. Here's your chance to give him a bit of advice. If you could give him one word of advice, Virginia Bottomley, or, or one sentence of advice, what would it be as he sets out on his, as his own man? I'd say congratulations. We're all absolutely delighted. That's not advice. Those who, those who knew him uh, closely knew that he had this tremendous cool, well, that's tremendous not, ability. That's yes, advice. it is. And my advice is to keep going and doing what he believes is right because he speaks for the nation. And that's what all of us have found on the doorsteps. When you talk to people, they feel comfortable with John Major, they have confidence in him, they respect him. He's a tried and a trusted yeah, Prime Minister. Really. Trust your own judgment. Michael Portillo, advice. I, I think he found the themes during the general election, which is to move more and more power down to the individual away from bureaucracies I'm, and to defend I the United Kingdom. I must stop you there because we're